Hi everyone, this is Wes with Pikes Peak Trades and excited to give you another weekend video stock market update for the week that ended October 23rd, 2020. And if you remember my video last week, I had shown only four weekly charts of XLF, IWM, SPX, and QQQ. And, and my bias on that video was very cautious. Um, and that, that ended up proving to be true this week as we saw uh, tech down uh, more than a percent. The SPX was also down on the week. Uh, small caps up slightly and, and the strength um, really in the market this week was actually in financial. So we're going to start again with the weekly charts, but I'm going to take you through a lot more. So really this will be like stocks A to Z. We'll get all the way from AMD all the way through Walmart and Zoom. So hope you are okay with a little bit longer video this weekend. So we're, we're back to the weekly chart here of XLF. Now we did not get a weekly breakthrough of this down sloping resistance line that I had talked about in last week's video, but what we did get is an inside week. So this weekly candle, it's low and it's high inside last week's low and high. And you're gonna see uh, that, that the close bounced bullishly off the low. So an inside week, what looks to be a bullish hammer candle, again, right up against that upper resistance rail and very, very close to the 50-day moving average that you can see up here in, in this corner, which is at 2568. So it is within striking range next week uh, of a significant breakout. Um, and, and you're going to notice my very bullish upside targets. Now, I kind of want to explain a little bit fundamentally why would I be calling here for a breakout in financials when obviously they have lagged the market uh, significantly since the early part of June. So the fundamental idea here is that banks simply make money when they make loans. That's pretty obvious. But in order for them to make loans, there has to be an incentive for them to do that. The, the, the making of loans is a signal of confidence not only in the consumer, but also in the banks that consumers, uh, businesses, uh, may, maybe even larger entities uh, that, that want to take out loans would actually make good on them. So the idea here is that we are transitioning positively away from the coronavirus scare uh, into further economic recovery, both from the consumer, the corporate, and ideally from the sovereign side as well. What we've been seeing recently through the month of October, we have been seeing falling bond prices and rising yields. Now, interest rates are not rising because central banks are raising their, their fund rates. That is not what is happening. Uh, they, they are simply rising, I think, due to market forces. Uh, that bond prices are falling, so yields are rising. When yields rise, uh, banks can loan at better terms, possibly more confidence in the loaning, and that is a re-inflationary environment. And that is what I'm, uh, what I'm thinking is happening here fundamentally. So if we continue to see outperformance of financials and maybe even industrials, that I'll show you two uh, Dow names that I, that I feel very good about here in a bit, um, then maybe we're actually going to see, we're going to see tech lag a little bit. And I'll, I'll try to explain how that might come out in the charting. Okay, so just to quickly recap here with XLF, right up against key resistance poise for a breakout. And, and that breakout needs to be solid, strong closes above uh, the 50-day first, but eventually it's got to get above uh, the 200-day, which is at, 2626. Sorry, that's on, on the weekly um, at 2626. Um, if I take you really quickly to the XLF on the daily, you're going to see on Thursday of this week a big breakout up almost 2%. It's now strongly above all of its key daily moving averages and worked itself back in, I, I hope, for a long time um, into this very nice upsloping bull channel. 
Um, and you can see what, what may be an ambitious target, but not out of the realm of possibility that we actually see it challenge its early June highs uh, by election week. So we'll see um, if that ends up coming out um, over the next, say, five to seven trading days. So let me now show you uh, of what I chart the second strongest uh, ETF on the week, which was IWM. And what I want you to notice again is look at that green candle. That is another inside weak green candle. Looks like another bullish candle similar to XLF. Now, a little bit more about inside candles, whether they're daily or weekly, they they typically only resolve in the direction of the trend. So they're they're usually only useful in the direction of the trend. But look, we, we have been trending up in small caps strongly since the September lows. Uh, we, we have not yet recaptured the late August, early September highs in either SPX or QQQ, but we have done it in IWM. So I think this inside week could potentially be communicating just a consolidation week leading up to a uh, challenge, these highs to beat, which would be the 2020 high slightly above 170 uh, and the all-time high, which would be slightly above 173. So again, uh, my target for that to happen uh, is during election week. So IWM here on the daily. Let's go ahead and transition there now, if my computer will let me. And there we go. So we can now see that, that we're trying to work up and out of this really a sideways consolidating channel uh, that was holding the, that the August highs. Um, you can see that consistently hit three times and trying to break out from the high that was set uh, intraday on October 12th. And, and here you see those possible targets. Now, you're going to also notice that consistently I am communicating that that final push that could happen over the next, say, say five to ten trading days could potentially mark a fairly significant top of a minor degree. And, and that could be a run-up into the election and then just kind of a market exhale, just kind of a, okay, that's done, and, and then a little bit of profit-taking I think could happen into mid-November. I'll also show you uh, some some charts that could say that we just continue to blast through all the way into November. Uh, also, we, we've got to be aware that, yes, we, we could see a sell-off into the election as well, and that's why you're going to see on every single chart, I still have either a blue or a red alternate count that still uh, has a fair share of probability. Okay, kind of working our way uh, back through um, in order of declining strength, we get to the S&P 500. So here you see not an inside week. So SBX did make a lower low than the week that ended on, um, this would be October 16th. And again, it's punching right up against that very, very long-term resistance level. But take a look. Since February, every time it's punched up against it, it its drawdown has been less. That tells me this resistance level is getting weaker. And the weaker that resistance level, the more likely it is to break. So next week needs a strong break into the 3500s. So a, a weekly close, ideally above last week's high. That would by far be uh, the most bullish resolution. But at the minimum, we want to close back into the mid 3500s uh, to try to get this back solidly towards the middle and upper part of this bull channel uh, where you can see a very bullish target uh, through to the end of the year. Now here, uh, th this, this timing is purely speculative. I, I don't know if we're going to be able to get 4,000 on the SPX by the year end if my bullish scenario plays out. And that's because uh, if I do take you here to the daily on the S&P 500, I do think there is a realistic five wave up topping pattern that could happen just above the current all time highs, right around 3600 moving into election week. So 
we, we've got to be wary. I, I do have the more bullish count on here, but when I show you QQQ next, you're going to see that I have a little more hesitation in counting it quite so bullishly. So let me now get to the weekly chart of the Qs. Qs were the weakest of what I chart on the week. They were down well over 1%. We did get on the weekly both an eight-week EMA and a lower rail touch and bounce. So that, that is the good, the good news. Um, obviously, the bad news is we are still significantly away from trying to get back into that bull channel. Um, and the move next week has to be strong. To get back into the bull channel, it has to get above 300, which is why I think next week that might be as far as it goes in tech. So I have what I think is the most valid five wave up from the September low, one, two, three, four, and I've got a target just slightly above 300, but beneath the all-time highs. And, and that would coincide with that weekly chart that I just showed, where we just reach up again and tag that resistance line, but we sell off possibly to retest the area that could be the breakout area right here uh, in the 280 to 283 area that we're actually still waiting to break out of what I think is just a consolidating uh, bull flag. Uh, now, with that said, you're going to start to see much more bearish poss or sorry, bullish possibilities. It is possible, although I think less likely, that we are in a nested set of bullish ones and twos. Um, and you, you're going to see some individual names that might lend some evidence to that, that we could just get a massive blast off over, let's say, the next six weeks that could be uh, certainly an amazing Christmas present if we saw QQQ as high as something in the 330s by the end of the year. That would definitely correspond uh, more to the SBX count that has it headed possibly to 4,000 by the end of the year. So I've got this here as a marker. It's my alternate count because I don't think it counts so well based on this very stretched out potential um, minute degree four wave, it looks a little bit better on the cues. Now, why would it be potentially possible that tech doesn't run up nearly as aggressively as financial small caps in the S&P 500? Well, you've probably been hearing about some of the antitrust things that are going around. I think it's possible if the election swings a certain way, now most likely, just because of the politicians that have been talking uh, most loudly, if we do see a, a presidency, a House, and a Senate go red, that there could be an increased level of movement towards antitrust in big tech. And that's why I think it could lag. I, I think we could actually have more of a bullish market, but we could actually have a rotation out of tech into financials, small caps, maybe the broader S&P 500 that would include your industrials and your banks and your healthcare that would maintain a bullish market, but we'd possibly see a rotation out of tech. So is it actually possible that's already happening? Is the smart money already moving itself out of tech? One last move up, but then we have some question marks going forward. That, that's kind of part of my thesis here. And let's see if it happens over the course of the next month. Okay, so those are the four main um, ETFs or indices that I want to show you. Now let's start going in order of, of some names. And I'm going to take you in order um, from strong to weak. So very similar to what I just did on the ETFs. So let's stay with tech here and let's get into Google. So Google and Facebook, uh, take a look. Google, uh, just after uh, setting in a low here um, on August, October 20th, look at this move. So 1.39%, 2.4%, 1.38%, and then Friday 1.59%. That is an incredible move. It is possible uh, by my short-term counting that Google did already put in um, 
a five wave move up, one, two, three, four, and five. But I'm a little more optimistic. If I'm calling for a breakout next week, I don't think Google's going to top. I've got a more optimistic target just shy of 700. I think it would make a lot of sense for Google to tag this upper rail. So by the end of next week to see something in the mid-1680s, which I'm actually positioned for um, in my aggressive trading account. Um, I did close out October 23rd calls, made a very healthy profit. I then rolled a, a few more, a handful of, of other contracts uh, at the 1620 and the 1640 strike um, into October 30th. Okay, so do potentially have some good upside resolution still uh, with the possibility that if markets do not break out, we, we could see potentially a retest of this area around 1580. How about Facebook? What a day uh, Facebook had um, in response right here. This is Wednesday to uh, Snapchat just posting great earnings and up huge. Okay, so obviously Facebook owns it. Um, is that in response to anticipating on October 29th, which is coming up next week, really great earnings? I do think so. So we saw that uh, big gap update, uh, over 4%, uh, consolidation here, healthy consolidation, follow through Friday, and, and I do think we've got upside targets that could take it uh, into the, the mid-290s by the end of, of next week as it's kind of a ramp into earnings. And now you're going to see that nested ones and twos that you saw in Q. It actually counts really well here in Facebook. So if we just get a market blast off, we could see Facebook challenge 300, consolidate a little bit, possibly after the election, and then could, could we see uh, a huge move up uh, towards December, well above all-time highs? I, I think... Um, in, in, in my probability assessment, I would give this the second most likely assessment, a top forming right here uh, that would have to co correspond to stocks not breaking out next week would, would be much lower in probability. Based on what I've seen here at the close of the week, you can obviously tell I'm much more optimistic looking into next week than I was at this time last week. Okay, so let's keep working here. I, I really like Microsoft. So you, you're going to see Microsoft on the close Friday. It recaptured its eight-day EMA. I really liked that close. I entered, uh, again, I entered October 30th calls, just like Goog, just like Facebook. Uh, for Microsoft, I entered these at the, at the uh, 215 strike. Now, don't get carried away and think that we're going to 250 next week. No, no, no. That's an end-of-year target. If the bullish resolution plays out, um, looking short term on Microsoft, there is actually some work to do. So there is work to do here on Microsoft all the way back to early July. This 216 to 217 area has been significant for uh, capping rallies and for capturing false breakouts and breakdowns. Look at where it closed right at the intersection of its top rail bull flag and that resistance. I think it will break. Um, and, and where would I see it resolving? Well, I don't know because I have Microsoft just having put in its minor too low. Uh, you're going to see the same thing on Amazon and Apple here in a bit. I cannot make a projection as to how high it's going to go, unlike Facebook, okay, that I, that I think is in the middle of, of already well-established bull run, uh, or Google, that I, I also think the same. Um, it's possible we could see Microsoft run up next week all the way up to challenge uh, this, this 225 level. Okay, so again, um, let, let's see uh, what happens. So now kind of going again in, in, in order of, of decreasing strength, we've got Tesla uh, getting you back to the daily. What you're going to start seeing in a decreasing way of strength is less daily capture of moving average resistance. Tesla, it tested kind of a breakout area right here around 407. It did move up and, and regain some of its losses, which I thought was significant to recapture both its 34-day EMA and its 50-day SMA. So I, I think an important bounce it did get me in in a very small way, 
back into a play on Tesla. Uh, we'll see if that works out. I do have, as kind of an, an alternate count, a path for Tesla to go to 400 or slightly less if this whole thing right here is, is just a long drawn out triangle, which is actually a very popular count right here. I, I do sometimes tend to think maybe uh, the most popular counts, uh, maybe that trade is a little crowded, maybe not the most likely count. So I am going to leave on my chart the possibility of a very bullish breakout uh, on Tesla all the way through November. Okay, so, so we'll see that as a possibility. Uh, moving in to Amazon. Uh, less strong on Amazon because it's currently beneath, on a closing basis, all its significant moving averages that you can see over there on the left pane. Good news about Amazon is it did place a low this week on Thursday, very, very close to a significant fib on some double rail support and what looked like two nice hammer candle bounces. Okay, now uh, Amazon has just beat me up over the last two weeks. Uh, I was not expecting uh, this rapid level of drawdown in Amazon. We're, we're talking about a 10% drawdown. Okay, and I wish I could say that my trading account only experienced a 10% drawdown because I was positioned with leverage. Uh, that drawdown, unfortunately, was more than 10%. Um, and there was some stubbornness there. There, you, you, you can't revenge play a stock. So I actually tried a little bit of discipline. I resisted purchasing Amazon on the close, mainly because it still has to prove it. So on a short-term basis with Amazon, it's got a lot of work to do. So you're going to see significant resistance clustering in the 32.20 to 32.40 area. So what, what do we have? Well, we have this upper rail. We have horizontal resistance at 32.20. We have fib resistance at 32.28. We've got another upper rail resistance, and we have the, the declining 200-period uh, MA on the 15-minute chart at 32.45. So it's got to be a prove-it for me. Is it possible if we get bullish resolution that Amazon just gaps up and goes, you know what, it is possible, but just because of the way it hadn't yet proved it at the end of last week. I was not going to try to front run it. Will I try to get back in? I'll try to get back in on a break and a back test, especially right here at that 3220 to 25 area. Uh, but I really can't say Amazon's out of the woods until we recapture, let's say, 3245 on a closing basis. Okay, in big tech, let's finish here uh, with Apple. So in Apple, uh, also a lagging name, also a significant sell-off, um, not, not quite a 10% drawdown, but significant um, in Apple. But again, some support um, at an extended support of the neckline, uh, kind of at an extended lower rail, at a significant fib. And on, on its close, it, it, it's an inside week, not quite. Not quite. So again, I decided not to play Apple because it's got some proving to do. If we get bullish resolution in tech, I could see a, a minute wave up above 120 with a retest. And like Facebook, I do see this nested one and two, but I don't like the look of it. Uh, I typically don't like the look uh, when the sub-degree wave has sold off more than its wave of greatest degree. And that's what we see in my purple bull count. So I, I think, let me change that, that's not a minor two, that's a minor one. Um, I see Apple uh, charting like Microsoft, like Amazon, in a minor one, minor two. Uh, not quite as, as bullish so far as Goog and Facebook. All right, so now some more individual names. So let me get you into, um, and I, I do want to do this kind of in increasing strength, um, AMD with a really, really nice move uh, over 3% on Friday, and it did recapture a significant moving average, got its 8-day EMA back, bumped right against its 50 SMA, and it's almost ready, I think, to break out of this handle. So aggressive traders uh, front-ran this on, on this low that held rail support. Um, I did add long stock, not leverage. I will add some more 
if we can break up decisively out of this handle, but it's got significant resistance. The 87 to 89 area, kind of a double capped lid here on this pattern uh, in order to get it to higher targets. How about Walmart? Now, a lot, a lot of followers here, very bullish on Walmart and some frustration with how long it's taking. Yes, it's taking a long time, but I want you to look at the strength of the pattern. So, so a potential cup and handle. Here's a bull staff. Here's a bull flag. We got a pattern within a pattern. It's just taking a while. But the upside targets are significant. So I am long Walmart. I'm not uh, ready to add unless we can get a breakout again of that upper rail bull flag and this very, very longer term uh, resistance right at the 145 area, but certainly possible going forward. Okay, Roku, um, a, a, a name that I did add, <coughs> excuse me, on this gap test and what I think is a bounce. So this open gap is right within a three of three wave. I, I think this is potentially uh, a Roku gap of recognition that might not get filled, uh, potentially a very, very long time. But again, like Walmart and like many other names that you're seeing, it's got to decisively break up and out of this bull flag early next week. It's got to reclaim this upper half of the bull channel in order for it to move to higher targets. So I am strongly positioned Roku, uh, uh, enough of a weighted amount in my primary investing account that I'm probably not going to add, uh, but certainly a healthy position. Okay, so let's get into some industrials that I like. Here, Boeing. Uh, look at Boeing with the potential uh, test of a neckline coming up on an inverse head and shoulder. I mean, why would you be bullish on Boeing? All right, do you believe the economy is going to recover? Do you believe the airline industry is going to come back? Uh, do you think the world is going to start flying again? Uh, if you believe in an economic recovery from COVID, you got to believe in companies like Boeing. And I think it's showing signs where price is starting to lead that potential uh, type of recovery above all its important MAs. And I'm just kind of waiting for a, a, a bump up Maybe a little bit of consolidation in the 170 area before I might add this more aggressively. So I am holding Boeing long, thinking that it could be a play for leverage um, if we can get through earnings successfully. I will not add long stock or play leverage into this earnings report. I simply will not. There is so much room to run if we get a strong reaction uh, from its earnings and that announcement is going to be on Wednesday of this coming week. Okay, another industrial. I've shown this one before. I really should have bought the breakout here of horizontal resistance at about 168, 169. Um, I have not had to change this chart at all since mid-August. Mid so uh, that's when I know that, I, that I've got a, a trend that I think is right. If there's a rotation within... The Dow, the S&P, and the industrials, I think Honeywell could be a big beneficiary, and I could see it moving up here uh, to challenge its early 2020 highs with very, very bullish targets. This is not one I've yet added. I will certainly think about it on some continued strength. Let me get its earnings date on here. I think I had taken that off the chart initially. I do want to show, not the economic events, when is earnings for Honeywell, again, end of next week. Um, I will probably not add stock ahead of this at following my discipline of just not adding long stock going into earnings. Let's see what happens. Okay, now weaker names. So Zoom. So if you've been following me, you've been following that my posts about Zoom have been very cautious. And these declining divergences on the daily is why. Um, it actually saved me a significant drawdown. I exited all of my positions in Zoom for very healthy profits during uh, this day here. As price moved up towards uh, this target at 565, I scaled out. I scaled out at 558, I scaled out at 560, I scaled out at 565, and although this day was, was up, th this day uh, signified a massive reversal. So um, 
a $20 reversal from high to close, and then you can see the downtrend has continued. Now, some bulls out there are going to say, well, this candle is an inside candle. Okay, wait, remember, I told you that inside candles tend to resolve in the direction of the trend. This is not an uptrend for an inside candle. We, we saw XLF and IWM in uptrending inside candles. That's bullish. I'm not convinced that this is bullish. It also closed beneath uh, $11 beneath its eight-day EMA. So I, I refuse to enter back long to Zoom. There is the possibility that we get uh, a high uh, back to 600. It's got to prove it. I actually am thinking... If my thesis about economic recovery from COVID is, is going to hold true, wouldn't it make sense that a name like Zoom would retrace? If, if we're getting people back in school, back in businesses, out of homes, out of virtual environments, doesn't that make sense? Okay, so, so you can see, I, I don't always try to put all the puzzle pieces together, but I I think some calls in this way do just make sense. I am leaning bearish on Zoom. I won't be entering back in unless we get a decisive breakout and, and recovery out of this down channel. Okay, another one, it's a name that I like, but I'm iffy on is beyond. And, and really just due to the strength of that down move. So I had told people as well on Twitter that I did exit beyond. I thought these candles right in here in the daily were exhaustive. So th th those are really nice gains for me, but I added in a little bit early. So I, I added on the test here of the 21 EMA right around 175-ish, but you can see that we had a drawdown uh, all the way below 168. If it keeps drawing down, my primary count goes to minor four. And, and that what, what that would mean then is that this target up here, at, at I think it's still a healthy target in the 200s, would, would eventually have a more significant correction. So a little bit more cautious on Beyond, not as cautious um, as Zoom. Okay, so those are some great names that I love to follow. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't show you, if I didn't show you metals and miners because I have been talking a lot uh, about metals and miners. I want to show you a few uh, names in that sector that I like. So let me show you First Majestic Silver. So let me get you out here to the weekly. So First Majestic Silver put in, in early 2016, a cycle low, all the way back up above 19, got hammered back down for the next four years, primary low, and then look at this move. An incredible move up with what I think is a wonderful consolidating a bull flag on declining volume and volatility, and I think it just broke out. So I think we got this week, we got the test, we got the breakout, we got the back test, we got a bull channel hold, and I have very, very optimistic targets for First Majestic. This is a long-term play. So I am holding long-dated call options, and I, I tweeted this out from January through April, I think we could see significant highs coming in. I ultimately have this very, very bullish target uh, for summer of 2021. So we're going to see. I'm extremely excited about this. It's got to continue out and break out of this very long-term down channel, which in the middle of November, it's got to get, get out of the $12 area. Uh, we, we will see. So let me show you another name. Uh, I want to make sure that I can find here where I've got this charted, I want to show you sand. So sandstorm, sorry for the delay, I can't remember where I put it. Not there, I might have to just quickly go through all of these. There we go. So gold royalty company sandstorm, you're going to see a very similar pattern. Big IPO opening to a cycle high, smash down to a low, I've got sand in an even more bullish progression. P1, P2, intermediate one, into minor one, two, 
and a sub-degree 1-2 play. I am very, very bullish on Sandstorm. So Gold Royalty, it is involved in leases and loans to mining companies. If we see a re-inflationary environment with interest rates naturally rising, gold becomes a hedge against inflation. If dollar weakness coincides, metals and miners will boom. That all fits with my rotating thesis. And you could see here, what are we looking for? Summer 2021, we're looking at 150%. That is extremely ambitious, but it is not out of the realm of possibility. Look what Sandstorm did from February, sorry, from March into July. In a four-month period, it was, it was up over three times. Incredible, up over 200%. So what I'm asking for here over the next, say, uh, 10 months, certainly possible, maybe even conservative. Okay, now I, I would want to show you the metals. So just take a look at GLD. This is a short-term chart. I, I can't be bullish miners if I'm not bullish metals. I have GLD as well in a nested set of ones and twos. So one up to test this gap, this big gap down that occurred mid-September. Minute two, sub degree one, two, one, two. I'm anticipating a huge breakout in metals and miners next week. And let's see if that call holds true. Maybe it'll be uh, prescient and predictive. Uh, maybe it will not. And, and we'll see a breakdown uh, to another intermediate low. Uh, we are going to see. Let me show you. Uh, did I show you First Majestic? I already did. Showed you Sand. Showed you GDX. Let's see GDX. As well, a nested set of ones and twos. Got a little bit uh, hammered late this week. Uh, oversold, but on divergence. Of course, I think GDX and GDXJ are great plays. So I hope you enjoyed that run through. Did we get you A to Z? We got you A to Z. We got you AMD. We got you through uh, Apple, Amazon, Walmart, into Zoom. Got you the big indices. Uh, because of the way the week closed, um, optimism setting up inside candles, challenging resistance, I'm much, much more optimistic than I was. Last week I was cautious. And I was right. This week I'm optimistic. I'm really excited to see what happens. Uh, thank you for the follows. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the questions. Let's see what happens on Monday.